of any kind from Anchorage, Alaska. So kind of a history-making day for this great state. Actually, uh, while it's cold here, as you can see, 10 above with a uh, wind chill factor of five above, we don't have nearly as much snow as most of the people do back on the East Coast. We are at Fort Richardson, just outside the city of Anchorage in the Buckner Field House here. Some of the military are on hand, along with all of the fight fans in the Anchorage area to watch Hector Macho Camacho and John Montez Jr. in an important lightweight bout. Macho Camacho, again fighting as a lightweight, currently ranked number four by the WBC at 130 pounds with a title fight in his future in that division. His opponent today, one of the outstanding lightweights in the division, John Montez Jr., ranked number seven of the lightweight ranks by the WBC, has only lost to ex-champion Hilmer Kenty here on CBS. He knows a victory here today puts him back among the top lightweights. And it's coming up shortly on CBS Sports Saturday, Brent. All right, Tim, and also we've got coverage of a pair of events. And for a look at the macho man, Tim. Well, Brent, the last time there was an important professional boxing bout in Alaska, it took place about a thousand miles north of here in Nome. And the promoter was none other than Wyatt Earp. And indeed, the legendary boxing promoter Tex Rickard followed on with boxing shows at the turn of the century. So today, here in Anchorage, Alaska, the tradition is renewed with the most important bout in more than 80 years. Hector Macho Camacho and John Montez Jr. An important lightweight bout, of course, for Montez and Camacho en route to what he hopes will be a title shot at the 130-pound crown. And of course, for both these boxers, this is quite a change of environment. Hector Camacho from Spanish Harlem in the Bronx, New York, and John Montez from Whittier, California, Mexican-American. Alaska, even the sound of it holds a certain mystery. The look of it is bewitching. Jagged mountain peaks and snow-quilted tundra teeming with wildlife, which shares the great land with 400,000 people. Half of those people live in Anchorage, hard by Cook Inlet in the shadow of the Chugach Mountains, where today Hector Macho Camacho is an adopted son preparing to meet John Montez Jr. Helicopter in the mountain, we land in the, we land in the mountain. It's been great, anything out here is great. It ain't like people think, they think it's igloos and things like that, it ain't nice. Uh, up here is a lot of mountains and it's like a, a city in a, in a wilderness here and uh, it's very great. The boxers have turned work into play in the Alaskan snow, and Anchorage fight fans have taken them into their hearts. Says Macho. Local promoter Bob Yucatel, like former him. Governor Walter Hickel, and Senator Ted Stevens presented Camacho with a native fur robe. And on the inside, it's a removable terry cloth. Oh, you don't fight men, though. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Hey. As for the famous sled dogs, well, Macho couldn't resist trying out the sweet science of mushing at the Fur Rendezvous Festival. Clearly, this husky wasn't impressed, but Camacho shows world-class ability on the runners as well as in the ring. But the dogs get the decision. Break. You have to be the first Puerto Rican-born fighter to ever become a musher. What was it like? Oh, it was beautiful. It was, it was like driving a Cadillac. <laughs> was, a Cadillac pulled by dogs. Yeah, it was great. I got to do that when I go home. You look pretty good on it. You have to balance. What's it feel like? Oh, it feel nice. You know, it feel like, like if you're skiing, I guess. You know? Kind of like skiing. It felt right. I was doing it, spelling on it. <laughs> did you give the uh, dogs names, or did you find out what their names were? No, I was going to mush. Mush. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Hector of the Yukon may take a dog sled back for those eastern snows, but today it's boxing business ahead against John Montez Jr. And we'll have it shortly here on CBS Sports Saturday, Brent. All right, Tim, we all left. Hector Camacho against Greg Coverson, and here he enters the Buckner Fieldhouse, and he has been billed as an adopted son up here in Alaska, but you can hear some cheers and some boos as perhaps uh, Hector's cocky presentation has not won all the hearts in Alaska. There are Montez fans here too, but he has made quite an impact. He came up about a month ago, and now, as he has returned for this fight, he has made many friends.
Oscar's mother, Maria. Here from New York. Macho Camacho in the ring and wearing his new fur robe given to him here by the folks in Anchorage, Alaska. And we'll be back with round one after this word from your local station. Talk to us. We're back in Anchorage, Alaska. Let's go to the ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon. sanctioned by the State of Alaska Athletic Commission. And the referee appointed for the afternoon contest from Nevada, Davey Pearl. <laughs> Presenting to you now on the left out of the blue corner, presently ranked number seven in the world by the WBC as a lightweight. Only one loss and a fine record of 22 wins, scoring 17 of these by knockout. Weighing in at a trim and ready, 134 and a half pounds, wearing blue trunks and a white trim. Hailing from Whittier, California, John Wito Monte. the red corner. Now ranked number four in the world by the WBC as a super featherweight with an outstanding record of 19 straight wins, scoring 10 knockouts in 19 wins. Weighing in tonight at 134 and a quarter pounds, wearing black trunks with a gold trim. Formerly of Bayamon and Puerto Rico, fighting out of New York City, New York, the Both of these boxers have developed their own followings here in Alaska. There is the referee, Davy Pearl, with the final instructions. The rules here are the Nevada rules uh, adapted and agreed upon by the two managers of the fighters, Benny Giorgino and Bill Giles. Giorgino for Montez, Giles for Camacho, and the officials are from Nevada. Referee Davy Pearl will score the fight along with judges Harold Buck and Richard Green on the 10-point must system. The tail of the tape. Camacho, 20 years of age, at 134 and a quarter. Montez weighed in at 134 and three quarters. Tim Camacho told me that he knows that Montez is a very, very slow stop. Told me he's going to go right out and jump on him in the first round. Let's see if he does it. Well, Montez said that he would not start slowly. He knows that that's a problem for him. And he uh, is going to try and get some pressure on Camacho early. Well, three fight plans often go out the window. Let's see what develops. Live from Anchorage, Alaska, the first ever network telecast from the state of Alaska. Tim Camacho is fighting this fight as a lightweight, and, and indeed he's a full lightweight limit, just about. And he looks a lot stronger, he looks a lot more solid than he did as a junior lightweight. Those four pounds may seem to make a big difference in his physique. Rank number four is a junior lightweight by the WBC. Dante is the number seven ranked lightweight by the WBC. Oh, solid left uppercut. And down goes Dante. He is in trouble. Hector Camacho with a solid left uppercut. Dante is trying to struggle to his feet. His eyes are dazed. Davey Pearl watching him closely. And it is all over. Hector Camacho.
seen uh, here against a sturdy, tough opponent in John Montez that Camacho can take out anybody with one punch. And here is a 135 pounder in John Montez. And there is chaos in the ring with the victorious Hector Camacho scoring a startling first round knockout at the hands of John Montez Jr. Let's go back and see that punch again. All right, you'll watch the way Camacho sets him up, steps over to the side. Montez never saw the punch coming and hit him right on the chin. Here's the step to the side. And there's the punch right on the chin. He never saw the punch, Tim, and those are the kind that get you out of there. Montez struggled to get back up, just could not do it. You could see in his eyes that he was not sure where he was. The opening underneath and a solid left coming up. It started out as, as a hook, in it, but it came straight up like an uppercut. One more time. A short piece of business for Hector Macho Camacho and Anchorage Alaska today, his 20th victory without a defeat. Tim, this is amazing that Montes was knocked out in the first round. Here's a fighter that's had 23 professional fights, only lost once and had never been stopped. These are the kind of things that they just are not explainable. So Hector Camacho continues to prove that he is the real thing. His sights set firmly on the 130 pound championship and then of course he plans to go after the lightweight title and indeed talks about going for three at 140 pounds as well. As Mother Maria in the ring, and while these folks here in Alaska didn't see much for very long, they saw the one-punch power of Macho Camacho. Tim, we mentioned that at 135 pounds, he looks a lot stronger, and I guess he sure is. Hector Camacho and will be returning to talk with the victor momentarily. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. <laughs> Tim, the macho man, he's using more energy now after the fight than he did in the fight. He went all the way to Alaska for that. I could have got him more action on a street Are corner over here in Spanish Harlem this morning. Still to come now this afternoon on CBS Sports Saturday. Let's see if they've lined up somebody else who wants to fight the macho man right now in Alaska. Take it away, Tim. <laughs> We are back in Anchorage, Alaska, in a very noisy crowd, enjoying the prowess of Hector Macho Camacho. Hector, uh, are you surprised that you got him in one? Well, I, I predict four, and then again, I predict five, but I said, if he gets silly, he'll go anyway. Well, you know, I wasn't surprised because I know them with everything in that left hand. And what can I say? You know, it just happened, you know. But you, did you see that opening underneath because he kind of bent down and you came up with the left hand? Well, yes, I was trying to get off a, a, a combination, but then the first thing that went out was a left uppercut, so it got him clean and down he went and the referee stopped him. What can I say? I promised everybody I was going to give him a show and they finished it once. I'm, I'll be back. You gave him a show, but it was short. Let's take a look at that knockout again. You can describe it. Well, yeah, I go out. I give a movement, a lot of jab, and wham, clean in the chin. Down he goes. Yeah, See? buddy. They're talking about I can't punch. Yeah, I can't punch. I don't know. Well, we said it shows that you have one punch knockout power against a strong guy like Montez, a full-fledged lightweight. See, I was full in with everything, body and all. Ooh, I love that. Ass, body and all. One more time here, Hector. And John Montez was determined not to start slowly, which has been a problem for him in the past, although, of course, he's only lost one fight. But he is known as a slow starter. Did you feel that he was cold, or was he ready to go? Well, he was cold, you know, and I, and I said I was going to give him a lot of movement, a lot of boxing, you know. And already he went, and already he went. What can I say? <laughs> all right. Now, I know I know that you want that 130-pound title most of all. What what What's the status of that? Man, I hope they don't drive this, because after every fight, I'm supposed to get a title fight, and here I am. If the junior lightweights don't want to give me a shot, I heard Boo Boo Mancini say that he'll hold his opinion to I fight a contender. Well, hey, he's a contender himself. Let him come on with it, and we get the show on the road. How about another fight in Alaska? Oh, beautiful. Next month. Right quick. Right quick. We negotiate on one right now. Are you planning on entering the Iditarod uh, dog sled race? Oh, man, not good, man. <laughs> I should get the application now. <laughs> Yo, what application? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Hector Macho Camacho wants to enter the Iditarod. That'll be covered here on CBS in a couple of weeks. And we thank you for another outstanding display, and congratulations to everybody concerned here in Alaska. Put on a great show for us here at Fort Richardson and in Anchorage. And now, once again, let's return to 